Well, hey there, crypto friends. Thanks again for joining me. Today on the channel, we have a special guest. Please help me welcome Mary Spiel. She is the CEO of Seek VR. Mary, how's it going? Good, good, good. Thank you so much for having me on your show, Shay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You know, I've been big into the concept of the metaverse for a long time now, uh, you know, well before we've seen this you know, kind of recent resurgence and, and refocus on it. Uh, with some pretty big events happening uh, late last year. Uh, but uh, I want to hear a little bit about you and how you got started here. And then w were you, you know, decided that Seek VR was where you wanted to go in that kind of direction. So just, just give us a quick breakdown of Mary and what you're all about and how you kind of got to where we are right now. Oh, okay. So, I mean, my background, I'm a space engineer. So I started out building satellites, launching, you know, rockets with satellites uh, and doing that kind of stuff. But I've always oh, that's been- all? Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like you like nonchalant about, oh, you know, rockets and shit, you know. You know. <laughs> like two little satellites into yeah. space. Uh, but I've always been interested in uh, the entertainment side of things, delivering mm. content. And so, uh, you know, I worked with the Boeing company, actually I had a technology for delivering content. We worked with Lucasfilms and the uh, list goes on, launched the technology. And then I wanted to be able to also help independent filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I knew that using satellite wouldn't be cost effective, uh, you know, for the skill that I wanted to build. So created an online video platform, sold that was kind of looking around to see what I wanted to do. Um, and I happened to come across the Oculus. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of everything 3d, anything immersion, you know, um, you know, um, so the previous versions of the metaverse, if you will, second life, all of that, you know, so for me, when I tried on the Oculus, this was way before Facebook actually acquired it because, yeah. you know, yeah. Alma hadn't run the Kickstarter or any of that. This was pre that. Um, and I was like, wow, this is what I want to be doing. I want to do everything you know, concerts, um, workshops, and, and nothing out there was focusing on the metaverse side of things. Everything was focused on, you know, VR gaming. Game, and yeah. so that's when I started to build it, you know, in terms of yeah. having this parallel world where people can come and watch concerts and socialize and all of that. So that's, yeah, that's how I got started with the metaverse. And, and, you know, like I said, you, like you were talking about, you know, this, this metaverse concept has been around for a long time. And I think the word kind of gets a little bit convoluted sometimes uh, for some people. But just real quick, in your words, like how would you define the the term metaverse? What, what, like what, what, what do you really feel like, you know, comprises a metaverse? What really is that to you? I think that the metaverse is really just a visual representation of content and also mm -hmm. of our world. Um, and so, for example, the first version of the web was 1D metaverse, right? One dimensional yeah. metaverse. We're talking about text and pictures. And then web 2.0 is a two dimensional metaverse. We're talking about text, pictures, and video. And now we're going into this three-dimensional metaverse, which is really the concept that, you know, people really had when they thought about the metaverse is that we will enter into this world that would replace our existing reality. Right, and then right, we right. would have this new virtual reality. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I think about when I think of the metaverse, but there, there are ranges of immersion. So, you know, uh, a game like Roblox, that's a metaverse, right? It's a social construct where people are representing their data in, in different ways. Yeah, I, I love that that term of, you know, uh, representing, you know, data in, in a, a graphical way, essentially. And that's what we're kind of seeing, you know, with this mm -hmm. metaverse is, is it's a, you know, digital representation of content. And, yeah. you know, content creation comes in a lot of different forms. And I think that, you know, what you guys are kind of doing here at Seek really is, you know, the idea of capturing that outside. Like, not that gaming is probably not a part of it, too, but outside of there's so much outside of just like the gaming experience that people can be involved in. And we're seeing, you know, these metaverses evolve into a point where, you know, now the hardware is starting to kind of get to the point where that that makes sense. It's not mm -hmm. as clunky and bulky as it used to be. It's still not there, I would say. We're getting close. Getting but, close. You know, it, but it's good enough where people are like, hey, this is interesting. Yeah, I can get on board with this. I can go check this out. Like, I watched the Foo Fighters play a concert uh, in VR, and I thought it was actually pretty cool. You know, and so I got yeah. my little guy. I'm like there in the balcony. I'm like, yeah, little emotes throwing up, you know. And, right, and so, right. you, you know what I'm saying? And, and so it is, it's, it's 
different, obviously, but I think that those experiences are still kind of unique and cool, especially, the, the, you know, early on right now. And you can say, hey, I was part of the early metaverse of, of what we were building. Exactly. And, and, exactly. And, and so I think that's exciting. And I think that's kind of what Seek is trying to capture here. Right. So tell us a little yes. bit about the company and what you guys are doing right now. So um, Seek, we are a metaverse platform that allows creators to be able to connect with their fans in digital worlds. And so we've mm-hmm. worked with a lot of music artists. We work with a lot of sports teams, mm-hmm. uh, helping them with the tools that they need to very easily build out their virtual worlds and then also make it super easy for their fans to then be able to connect because we truly have believed since the very beginning that in order for the metaverse or for any new web3 technology uh, to be you know utilized globally it has to be um, easy. There has mm-hmm. to be that good use and it has to have that mainstream, you know, um, a- appeal. Um, and that means it's got to be easy to create content and it's got to be easy to access content. Yeah. No, I fully agree. I think that the barrier to entry for a lot of people is just a little too high for most yeah. crypto things, <laughs> whether yeah. it's a game yeah. or or simply just buying on an exchange. You know, most right. people just not, they're not really comfortable with that. And, you know, that's the crazy thing is that with this whole paradigm shift we're seeing with blockchain, you know, it, it, it's a ripple effect. It, it doesn't change just one aspect of our lives. Like, it's not like just like, oh, we're having a financial revolution and that's great. And everyone's going to have the, you know, better access to financial tools and, 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 and that's really going to be made. But there's so many other things that, that ripple effect from this. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, one of those things we're starting to see right now is kind of social interactions, the metaverse, mm-hmm. av- how advertising kind of, you know, works itself back in there and then yeah. brand exposure and, and how that's going to look like here in the future as we move to yeah. a more digitally focused, you know, life. When you look at yeah. uh, you know, current usage right now, people are spending, you know, a, a massive eight hours a day on their on, on, a, on a digital device. Now, yes. right now, their cell phones. But what happens when it's a a really lightweight digital device that allows you to access a VR metaverse on the go whenever you want? I mean, we're we're really close to things like that, right? So, I mean, how how do you feel about the technology or like the hardware side of things? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we're very close. You know, we were just at Meta and we were looking at the uh, Ray-Ban stories. Mm -hmm. I envision that in the very near future, we will have a device such as that, no different than the glasses that I have on, that would allow us to be able to do a lot of the same things that today we have to do with, you know, complicated VR headsets or other headsets. And that's where we all want to get to so yeah. that I can be in my space. If I want to look at all my NFTs that I own, I just put on that glasses or maybe it's even a projection, you know, it's mm. some kind of light field projector that then projects all around me. So right. it continues that graphical representation um, or brings me into the metaverse. Yeah. Yeah. And I think having, you know, like looking at really the future of where this could go with devices, you know, maybe a mixture of AR and, and, and VR to really complement each other in, a, you know, a kind of a lightweight headset. I, you know, we've seen a lot of, of technologies that have focused around kind of mapping our current environment right in a full mm-hmm. digital, uh, you know, a, a, a high detailed kind of way. Right. So we can mm-hmm. kind of represent that in, in a lot of different ways. And, you know, thinking about having this kind of immersive experience, you know, being able to go to, we'll say, the Great Wall of China and yeah. experience in VR in such amazing, stunning detail that, you, you know, I, I wouldn't say maybe you wouldn't know the difference, but, you know, so, so crazy good that it's like, man, it's almost like being there. And, and so I, I think that, uh, you know, hopefully, w- you know, we're working towards that. And I know that with Seek, you guys have like a, a, a partnered headset that you guys are working with, too, that, uh, you know, is, is a whole part of your ecosystem, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and we're very close to that in terms of the, you know, high visual, uh, you know, fidelity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of the latest, you know, content that we're seeing is very, very uh, realistic and yet magical enough to where it maintains the, you know, the the focus of it, you know, being VR. Um, and we created a very simple uh, VR headset with very high 
uh, field of view with a good gives a good immersion because when we started there was nothing out there for mobile right. and then even some of the other cheaper stuff that you see on you know for sale a lot of them have a very small field of view so mm -hmm. it was creating a bad experience for people's first vr so that's yeah. why it was super important um especially being that we work with a lot of music fans we work with a lot of sports fans a lot of vr newbies you know mm -hmm. people that were not VR enthusiasts, but wanted to try VR because of their favorite artists or sports right. team. Yeah, so we needed something super simple. You just download the app, iOS, Android, on your phone, drop it in, and you were there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think that you're right. A lot of these people are coming in, and they're not necessarily VR fans, but they're fans of whatever kind of content, whatever IP or brand. Uh, that you guys exactly. are working with and and you know in general that really is the focus right working with celebrities working with musicians working with different brands to bring experiences to fans of those brands and not necessarily like oh well it's just we're marketing to a general vr audience right i mean that that's the main thing and i think that i think you're right me, me being a musician myself and being in the music world too i mean i get it you know as as far as like fan experiences something simple they can just jump into boom it's it's mobile based doesn't take yeah. a lot of effort but still delivers on like the cool factor right and everyone's like oh that was actually really cool and makes an impact but but not in a you know we don't want a negative impact we want a good positive exactly. experience exactly. like hey i'll come back and do that again not like right. okay it was bulky i don't know if this is really right. for me you know right. and, and i think that's where we're at right now with with uh, some of the experiences you know that, that we've seen in the in the past yeah i think that a lot of the experiences and i'm even seeing this with a lot of the metaverses that you see out there they're so focused on their marketing to metaverse enthusiasts rather right. than creating content that's going to be appealing to people and motivate them to keep coming back right. and to create a sustainability for the metaverse in general or even for crypto you have to have the type of utility that gets people to incorporate it into their everyday lives so you know and that's what we've been focused on we're like we're not uh, a VR company. We're a company that's applying the VR technology to creating amazing fan experiences for sports teams, for music artists, and so on. And that's why we've been able to attract the likes of the Lady Gaga, Ziggy Marley, and, and the mm. list goes on. Because we've had the experience first, we've had the user uh, first, and the utility comes before anything else. Right, right. Now, you bring up a good point there, you know, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, kind of what one of these experiences looks like kind of taking one of your clients from start to finish. And, and then, you know, what kind of the goal looks like there. So can, can you take it through maybe maybe like an, a, a case example here so we can kind of get an idea of exactly how Seek operates with brands, uh, you know, tr trying to meet this, this cool metaverse goal with them? Yeah. So let's uh, take, for example, you know, we did a uh, we've done Ziggy Marley with the uh, Lady Gaga VR experience. Um, in terms of that, we typically meet with the artist and artist management or the label, and then we discuss the concept of what we want to create. We talk mm -hmm. about what the artist is doing, how they're connecting with their fans, and then we come up with a concept or a way in which their fans can experience them differently inside of the metaverse. Because if we're bringing them into 360, you know, live action, or if we're bringing them into their own virtual world, we want to ensure that they're going to have something that's different and unique that they're also going to keep coming back for. Mm -hmm. And then once we create it, we make it available on the platform. Again, you jump into it so easily, download the app on iOS, Android, or if you already have an Oculus, you can also use that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and now we're adapting it for desktop and, you know, you can even use an iPad if you don't want to put the VR headset on right away. Mm -hmm to be able to navigate and walk around and, and do stuff like that. But that's usually the process, you know? Very cool. Yeah, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, really you guys, like you said, you're you're customizing these experiences based upon, you know, feedback. They're, they're, they're carefully crafted versus mm -hmm. like, hey, we made this thing. Now let's try and attract some people to what we made versus like, 
okay, well, what, what, what are people interested in? Let's make something like that. We know people are going to be attracted to it because we started off kind of, uh, you know, on the other foot, right? Shoe on the other foot there. So I think it makes exactly. a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and but. music makes sense because it's one of the few things that we find in life that everybody likes, right? You've never yeah. met someone that says, I hate music. It's like, <laughs> what's your favorite kind of music? And then on top of that, you think about a song like Despacito, right? We're working with Louis Fonzi, so that's why I bring that up. It's been mm -hmm. listened to almost 7 billion times. That means almost everybody on the planet has heard this song. But the thing is, people are listening to it over and over and over and over and over again. So we take it and we say, well, how can we create a new experience mm -hmm. for people to be able, a new way for people to experience the song again? And that's what we want to do with VR. It's not yeah. that we go and we create, you know, something that's not proven or, and then okay now we got to go find a new audience for that right. you know and, and there are people that do that and it works yeah. for them for yeah. us we want to take that song that seven billion people people have listened to seven billion times and want to listen keep listening to it and we make it new again yeah no i i love that concept actually i really love that the idea of that and you know taking something that is proven that is fun that people love already but giving it mm -hmm. a good metaverse experience because we definitely need that yes. we need more curated experiences like that um, yeah. So, so looking to the future here, looking forward for Seek VR, what is on the horizon that you can kind of tell us? Any kind of like little secrets? Any, any un, un, un uh, you know, drop secret nugget? Any, anything out there that, that maybe you haven't told anybody about that you want to let everybody here know that is coming up for Seek uh, before we get going? Yes. So we have a land sale that's coming up for Seek for the Seek right. Metaverse, which will allow a lot of other creators um, to be able to create all these different venues. Because when you think about the Seek ecosystem, we have a creator dashboard. So creators are able to create their experiences and they're always looking for different worlds that mm -hmm. people can or venues, if you think about. It. So the landowners think of them as venue owners because these are the places where all these events are going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, one of such events that we have coming um, or one of such um, experiences as we teamed up with the city of Miami uh, gardens and that's where the Super Bowl happens they have FIFA 2026 coming yeah mm -hmm. so it's all Dude. kinds of stuff happening there and we're now bringing that experience into the metaverse Wow, that's awesome. So, I mean, I, I, I love that. So, yeah, make sure you guys go check out the Seek land sale coming. Do we have a date for that land sale? Do we know when that when it's going to start? Um, so the so we had like a beta test with just a lot of our holders to make sure that we can work through all the different kinks. Mm -hmm. And then we have the phase two that's coming. Um, and that one is going to start August 15th. Uh, for the phase two of the land sale, and you're awesome. the only, you're the first person to get that date. So boom, there it is, August fifteenth. Hold it to him. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the great thing about this is that you know, t together building the metaverse, doing these cool things, you know, uh, having the support of the community is really a really big thing. And so mm -hmm. I thank you so much, uh, Mary, for being here and sharing all about Seek VR, your guys's plans and your history here when it comes to the metaverse. I think it's important and I'm excited to see what you guys continue to build here in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. That's all we have for today, folks. Until next time, dash that crypto, friends.